In this tutorial, we're going to review how to draw a sphere. Uh, let's sketch in a sphere. That's not too bad. Uh, by the way, if you need a little bit more assistance to draw a sphere, the best way to do it is to sketch in a square, find the vertical center, find the horizontal center, and then you know that the sphere is going to touch at these four points. If you need more help, you can take the distance from here to here and mark it off here, 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 and here, and you can use those points to guide you along and get something that looks more or less symmetrical. Okay. So the next step is to indicate the light break the shape of the shadow, and the shape of the cast shadow. So uh, in, the ca in this case, uh, our image is lit from the top and slightly from this side. The light break is going to run from the center perpendicular to the light source. So our light is going this way. You can see that the corners of our shadows are approximately at this angle. And then our sphere is going to curve this way. The light break on the sphere is going to curve this way. Now that's actually measurable. I can measure where the shadow starts to the edge and see how many times it fits into the width of the entire sphere. So here it looks like it's once, twice, two and a half times. Let's see if I got it right. Once, twice, two and a half times. Okay, when you guys indicate the light break, make sure you're using the side of the pencil. Do not put a sharp line there because that'll never look like a soft transition. Okay, so I just indicated the light break. Now I'm going to indicate the position of the highlight. Again, don't put a sharp line there. I'm working really faint. I want you guys to see it, but you still want to make sure that's really faint. Now, we're also going to indicate the shape of the cast shadow. So for me, it starts here, and then runs approximately here. How long is the shadow from the side of the sphere to the edge of the shadow? Looks like it's a little more than half a sphere. So it's going to run to right about here. Do not put a sharp line around your cast shadow because the edge of the shadow needs to transition. It needs to get softer this way. Okay, the next step is to separate my highlight from my light. Use your HP pencil. Um, that might be a little bit too pale for you guys uh, to see. I'm going to start off with a 2B. Hold the pencil way back like this. Make sure one side is polished and separate your highlight from your lighter area. Keep your strokes really close together. If you start seeing direction, break up the pattern a little bit by changing the angle. Make sure you go through and shade the entire sphere. So I'm gonna keep working my way down until I see the highlights start to pop. This sphere is ever so slightly reflective, so the highlight's gonna be a little bit stronger than the rest of the light. I'm gonna keep going down until I see the highlights start to glow. Okay, next step is to jump directly into the shadow. Start going darker, and pay attention to the fact that the body shadow, this area here, has a soft transition. So here I'm probably going to need to switch to my 2B pencil, which I've already switched to. Follow the shape of the light break, but shade ever so slightly past to create the soft transition. At the same time, I recommend also shading your cast shadow. Value is very relative, so I don't really know how dark one thing needs to go until I compare it to something else. So in order to get the values of the shadow exactly right, I need to darken my cast shadow so I can make a comparison between the two. Okay, so here I notice there's a brighter reflected light. I'm going to work around the reflected light to go a little bit darker, and eventually I'll start seeing the reflected light pop out. It'll start to stand out.
Okay, I'm gonna start going a little bit darker. Again, don't press down, work in layers. Allow the values to build up little by little. So now I'm working to get my core shadow. I'm gonna go darker, darker still. The core shadow is gonna follow the curved shape of the light break. It might be really strongly visible here. Here, where there's a really strong reflected light, it might start to fade out. It's still there though. And this is one of those cases where I know something needs to be true in order to see it correctly. Because quite often people confuse these two values together and connect the light to the reflected light. Don't do that. It's going to make this part of the sphere look completely flat. All right, so I'm going to shade a little bit more of the cast shadow, paying attention to the fact that it has a sharp edge. And then here I'm going to start diffusing the edge a little bit. You can see I'm bouncing around a lot. So I'm going from the shadow to the cast shadow. At this point, once I've indicated a little bit of the cast shadow, it might be time to go back to my light and start getting a distinction between the light and the slightly darker value. So the light is going to be lightest here, where the sphere is most directly facing the light source. And then gradually, little by little, it's going to start to darken as it heads towards the shadow. So let's get a distinction here. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm working in graphite. It's a relatively light material. <clears throat> but right now I am establishing a distinction in value between the lightest light and the rest of the light. Guys, a sphere is a series of constantly changing planes. And since you'll never have a change in plane without a change in value, the value shift on a sphere constantly changes from inch to inch, actually from half an inch, quarter an inch to a quarter an inch. Keep the value in the sphere constantly moving because the plane on a sphere, not really planes, they're constant uh, curves, are constantly changing. Okay, so now that I have a little bit of a distinction between the lightest light, I can start moving in and getting the half tone, that soft transition between my shadows and my lights. Once I put distinctions here, once I've made the sphere darker in the light, you realize that, gosh, the shadow needs to go a lot darker. Again, it's a matter of comparison. So now I'm going to switch to my 4B pencil. And I'm going to start going darker. I'm looking for the darker values of my core shadow. So in this case, because this, this sphere is in a dark environment, there's not a lot of reflected light here. So the sphere is going to go really, really dark here. I can see the core shadow running through. And I build up and up and up. Again, do not lose the core shadow right here. It's very, very easily lost if you're not aware that it's there. building up the value. Uh, a few other things I notice. There's a reflection of the shadow back on the sphere right here. So it's going a little bit darker and that's going to help separate the sphere from the cast shadow right here. So you can see even in a simple shape like this sphere, there's a lot going on in terms of value. There's a lot of subtlety, a lot of value transition, absolutely everywhere. The more accurate you can be about it, the more sensitive you are to little shifts in value, the better you're drawing. And over time, as you draw, you're going to become more sensitive to those delicate shifts and record them better. So I'm going to keep going darker and darker. I'm going to try to build as much contrast in the drawing as I can. Bounce around. Make sure that you also work on the cast shadow. So the cast shadow here goes very, very, very dark. Make sure you guys go through a range of pencils as you're going darker. So for the shadow, I went through and 
start off with my 2B, my 4B, my 6B, don't immediately jump to your very darkest pencil. You're going to get a really rough effect. Okay, I'm going to keep going a little more. By the way, do not be afraid to jump backwards. So if at any point you feel like there are certain areas that need to be adjusted with lighter pencil, this is back to my 2B. So for instance, I noticed that maybe the halftone here could go a little bit darker. You can always do it. So I was saying that the cast shadow usually starts really sharp at the beginning and gets fuzzier. Uh, in this particular image, because this sphere is in a really dark environment, um, the cast shadow doesn't do that. So really, how much the shadow lightens depends on the quality, the quantity of ambient light in the room, other light reflecting back in. In this case, we have a really dark environment, the ambient light's been eliminated completely. Not a lot of lightning in the shadow which makes the drawing really dramatic. Okay, so at this stage, I'm gonna start finishing up. I'm gonna to move to my 6B pencil. You can also use an 8B pencil eventually, but I think 6B is about as soft as you really need to go. So I noticed that my core shadow goes really dark here. Always try to get the strongest range of values possible, uh, particularly in the core shadow, which really needs to be there in order for the form to turn, in order for the form to appear three-dimensional. Okay, look, I could spend another couple hours on this. Uh, I think this demo's gone long enough. Uh, just one little piece of advice. Uh, let's say you do, for instance, end up going too dark. This could happen in a cast shadow. At some point, the cast shadow is going to go so dark that you're going to see it starts turning into a tunnel. If that happens, you can always use your kneaded er eraser to adjust the value. So you can take your kneaded eraser and instead of rubbing, tap at the drawing. Tap, 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 tap. That's going to take out a few, just a little bit of the graphite pigment and bring your tunnel back to looking like a coarse shadow. Not the easiest thing to shade the sphere, but really important to practice shading spheres because understanding what shadows, light, shadows and lights look on a sphere is going to help you render out increasingly more complex objects.